In my last video testing out my RX 6800 XT, I mentioned the crazy frame time graph that was going all over the place when I en enabled ray tracing, and I'm not seeing, well, I mean, there are the stutters that we get on any GPU here, but I wasn't seeing that on my NVIDIA GPUs, but I think I've isolated uh, the, pro the, the reason I wasn't seeing it. NVIDIA reflex low latency. Watch the frame time graph in the top left corner. As soon as I switched that off, you can see that I'm getting those same stuttery spikes and really juddery camera movement that I was seeing on the RX 6800 XT. So it turns out um, it's not actually just that this game is not supporting AMD ray tracing very well. And to be clear, in that video, I was in no way trying to blame AMD. I was more blaming the game not being uh, thoroughly tested on AMD. It looks like, uh, well, in that video, I solved it with a frame rate limit. In this video, it looks like the reason I wasn't noticing it on my NVIDIA GPUs is I just automatically turn on uh, NVIDIA Reflex when it's available. And again, look, we see the frame time graph smooth out quite a bit when I do that, which makes me think that if I had tried using AMD's sort of equivalent technology of Radeon anti-lag from the driver, whether that would have solved the frame time graph. I haven't had a chance to check that out myself, um, but it does look like some people have said that that has, that has helped them. Now, what graphic settings are we actually using here? Because we're only getting a little over 30 FPS. Well, this is what happens when you try to use all the ray tracing features at DLSS quality at 4K resolution. And I'm gonna leave on the anti-leg because that seems to be helping. And to make this interesting for those of you comparing to my 6800 XT video, um, I'm leaving motion blur off and hair works off, so we're basically doing the same settings with the Ultra Plus settings, which again, even if you're not using the ray tracing in this update, at least we did get the Ultra Plus settings, which is nice. So if you're comparing to the AMD GPU, here you go. If you wanna see it at the native performance level, um, without any DLSS, well, it's it's not good, guys. So TAU, I already explained that if you don't have the dynamic resolution scaling turned on, which I don't, this is native with TAA, but not upscaling. And we can see that we're at 23 frames per second. So we definitely do not want to try to use ray tracing at native resolution uh, at 4K. Now we will try out some other resolutions and all of that. Um, but for now, let's also look at what if we just didn't turn on ray tracing. So here is now native 4K. I'll reset the averages and all that. So you actually can play the game around 60 FPS or more at native 4K. It depends on what's going on in the scene specifically. Uh, we definitely do drop around 60 FPS at times. Um, but you can basically just max it out without ray tracing. Although if you're not using the ray tracing, you might want to consider using the DX11 mode of the game, which does seem to uh, not have quite as many issues as the uh, current DX12 version of the game. Now, if you want to use DLSS quality at, uh, you know, at 4K without ray tracing, I'll reset the frame rate counter, but once again, uh, we're up around 80 FPS range. So I think a lot of people would just play it like this if you wanna use all the new Ultra Plus settings. But in this video, I'm gonna primarily be focusing on the ray tracing implementation. So if we do want to have all the ray tracing enabled at 4K, is it possible to hit 60 FPS if we go to DLSS performance, which I don't really like the look of. Some people say they can't tell the difference. I can, although I'm on a 48 inch screen, that probably makes it um, a bit more obvious. Also, the stutters do look a bit worse now um, with all of that enabled. So again, it, it is still a bit stuttery. The reflex doesn't completely solve it, although it's not nearly as juddery as it is without it. So anyway, it looks like we can't really target 60 FPS with ray tracing. So you could, if you're on a variable refresh rate display, just live with this. Uh, you could do something like I did on my uh, Radeon GPU, which is, um, you know, actually capped to 30 frames per second and um, enjoy a smoother frame time graph and your GPU will draw less power and heat and all that because you're not fully utilizing it. Um, so this is definitely a possibility. And if you're doing that, you might as well have your, um, your DLSS less aggressive. You could go up to DLSS quality, which looks very good at 4K frame cap to 30 frames per second. And I'm not saying there's no stutters at all, I'll reset the averages, because the DX12 version of this game just has some stutters as you walk around, um, that, but it doesn't have a lot of the, uh, seems to be ray tracing focused stutters that we see, again, without um, reflex enabled and all of that. 
So this is definitely one way that you could play the game. Overall, I think I'm going to not have the frame rate cap uh, enabled while I'm testing this because with the low latency enabled, um, I was going to say these stutters don't seem quite as bad, but holy cow, they came back. What's happening, guys? Man, this game is so broken. Maybe if I flip uh, this on and off again, that will... Yeah, weird. Looks like turning low latency on and off again has kind of smoothed out the frame time graph. Why does she keep following me around? Leave me alone. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. If we do want to stay at 4K resolution, we could just look at, okay, um, what if we just keep ray traced global illumination and ambient occlusion at DLSS quality in order to increase performance a little bit here? If I do that, we're basically running at console settings and leaving the frame rate uncapped, we're in kind of the lower 40s in this area. Some areas of the game are a little more demanding, some are less. And um, by the way, some people have been asking, how come my uh, my game doesn't crash? Guys, I just, it doesn't necessarily crash while I'm filming, but yes, I am also getting uh, game crashes and all that that you guys are as well. Now, if you're willing to go with these settings and go to DLSS performance, um, which again, I wouldn't personally do, but if you wanted to, we still don't hit 60 FPS but we are getting closer to it. And if you're on a variable refresh rate display with G-Sync compatibility, all of that, you know, 50 to 55 FPS here does feel pretty good. Um, and you do get the most impactful ray tracing feature, which I think is the um, global illumination. Now, for those of you wanting side-by-side -side comparisons, I don't have time to edit those today, but I did it in my 4090 video. So take a, uh, feel free to take a look over there. Now, for me personally, I'd probably be at that quality setting if I was doing this at 4K, or to be honest, I'd just not have the ray tracing on um, at 4K. But what if you're not at 4K? What if we were at uh, 1440p? So let's drop down to 1440p and take a look. So if we are at 1440p with all of the ray tracing features enabled, and I believe, uh, here, let me reset my frame rate counter. Uh, I believe I was still using DLSS here. I think we're on DLSS quality. We can confirm that here really quickly. Yes. So DLSS quality at 1440p. Um, we're near 60 FPS, although it's not a lock. If we're at the native resolution, um, we do drop to around 40 FPS with all of the ray tracing features enabled. So this is very difficult even for the RTX uh, 3080 at 1440p. If we wanted to try to go to 60 FPS we could, with all the ray tracing features enabled, um, we could try going to DLSS balanced at 1440p, which again, to my eyes, does not look quite like a native 1440p, but it it's not horrible. I could definitely see um, people uh, choosing to do this, although you can see I'm actually currently CPU limited below 60 FPS. So that's the other thing about the ray tracing in this game is sometimes you can't hit 60 FPS even if your GPU could because you hit a CPU limit. On my 4090 video, I showed how DLSS 3 frame generation can help in that kind of a situation. But uh, NVIDIA is either unable or unwilling to allow that on their um, RTX 3000 series cards. So what if uh, we turned off some of the ray tracing and stayed at DLSS quality. In other words, went with the console style, ambient occlusion, and global illumination. Can we hit 60 FPS? Looks like the GPU can with DLSS quality, um, but again, we still hit some CPU limitations, um, although maybe slightly less since the RT is turned down. Hard to say exactly, but see, when I'm dipping below 60 here, it's actually the CPU. And by the way, I have a Ryzen 7 7700X on DDR5 6000 CL36 memory. So really, if they can't program the game to hold 60 FPS on that kind of a system, I feel like it's a, it's a programming issue, guys. Anyway, let's go ahead and test out 1080p real quick before we, well, actually, you know what, before we leave uh, 1440p, why don't we just be like, okay, but if you just didn't want to use ray tracing and you wanted to play it native. So native 1440p without ray tracing, notice while we're still CPU limited, notice the GPU utilization is not reaching 100%, so this is still um, CPU limited in this case. 
And and if you're like, CPU's not reporting 100% usage, yeah, the game can't use all 16 threads of the CPU, but the threads it's using are maxing out, so a faster single core performance would boost performance. That's why I say CPU limited. The point is the GPU's not fully utilized, but we do hit around 100 frames per second at least on this CPU in this scenario. 80 in this case, so again, pretty CPU limited here, um, but it is less CPU limited than you are with ray tracing enabled, or at least your CPU limited at a higher total frame rate. If we go down to 1080p then, without ray tracing enabled, then we are going to basically have about the same frame rate we were getting at 1440p. Uh, without ray tracing enabled because we are CPU limited, so I'm not really seeing a difference there. But if we go ahead and enable the ray tracing, let's go, let's at least test that out to see what happens for completion. First, let's try all of the ray tracing on at the native TAA implementation, no DLSS, and it looks like we're hovering in the uh, mid to low 50s, but once again, we could wonder, is that because it's as far as the CPU can go? Well, the GPU is reporting near 100% utilization. So we could try DLSS quality, and guys, I don't really like upscaling at 1080p resolution, uh, but for the sake of the video, let's go ahead and try it out. Now, DLSS quality here, if this doesn't get as much of a frame rate increase, that's gonna be because, yep, the GPU is now just dropping to a lower utilization, but our frame rate's not really going up. Um, and that is, again, because we're actually CPU limited here. If I ran outside of this town area, I would be less CPU limited, and we would see frame rates go higher. Although, as we kind of run around, you might see the occasional stuttery frame time spike, because those definitely still exist no matter what you do. So, as you see, um, as I get out here with fewer NPCs and all of that, um, the overall frame rate is going up, and the GPU is less limited. Do you guys see what I'm saying? The GPU is closer to full utilization. I'm less CPU limited now, and we're actually delivering uh, higher frame rates. So if you guys were like, I got, I'm not, I'm getting better performance. Well, if you're outside in the fields, again, like I said, you're less CPU limited, and that would make a difference. Overall, I've got to say this game needs some serious work for this to be a, um, you know, I, I think a, a great patch. I think it's, um, you know, it's nice that they're doing the updates. I think the Ultra Plus settings are great, but the DX12 implementation needs a lot of work. And uh, yeah, there's a big stutter again right there. See, <laughs> um, Anyway, I need to leave for, well, wow, I'm actually going to be late for work right now, guys. Um, I hope all of you have an excellent day.